Hola, I'm Daniela Delgado Ramos. And I'm Pedro Reynolds Cuellar. And for this paper, Pedro and I studied community-based technology co-design. Here we use multidimensional, longitudinal, and principally quantitative analysis to offer insights about the value of participation, what we call here the co, and how it unfolds in context of community-based participatory design programs. Our work uh, focuses on the International Development Design Summits, or the IDDS, implemented in Colombia. We, uh, the summit's model was developed by Amy Smith at the MIT D Lab and started back in 2007. In Colombia, the program started implementation in 2015. Summits are intense, hands-on, community-based design trainings that bring together a diverse group of people to teach them the co-creative design process and how to prototype low-cost technological solutions to improve livelihoods of people. Before summits, organizers work with community up to six months in advance, and during summits, community members join as part of the design teams. In Colombia, between 2015 and 2018, close to 250 participants from all over the world have participated in these summits. These graphs uh, represent the demographical distribution for each summit across age, gender, origin, and sector where the participants work. The study used a service with a total of 55 questions used for participants to report self-perception across, uh, across three dimensions. First, the participants' objectives and aspirations related to the program. Second, their learnings. And finally, uh, feedback regarding the summits. We assemble a data set including data from 224 participants across five different summits between 2015 and 2018. The data was at the beginning, uh, was taken at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of the summit. Also, we complemented the data set with data from interviews to summit organizers that intended to gouge the involvement by summit participants beyond the summit. For the data analysis, we classified the participants in three main categories, the community members, the nationals, and the internationals. These aim to differentiate the perceived value from community members, national participants living in geographical proximity to these communities, and international participants thought as external agents who share less context. We built um, Gechner and Wagner's framework of areas of participation by describing our findings with regards to outcomes of the programs across different levels, uh, like individual area uh, from participants, the communities as national area, and co-productions and created artifacts as a company area. Additionally, we follow Bolton's user gain classifications when we report our findings regarding skills learned in, learned in, terms, in the program in terms of personal and professional gains, collaboration gains, and sustainability gains. In, ter in terms of the value of the program to participants, we first use the result before and after the summits about reported perceived skills from the participant. The explored skills including tooling and machining, creative use of materials uh, as personal and professional gains, intellectual collaboration and information gathering as collaboration gains, and teaching and adaptability as sustainability gains. The graph here shows the, a consistent increment of skills perception across the five different programs and the six evaluated skills. We can see that at the beginning of the program, the most variable skill level was reported for technical skills, like tooling and creative use of, of materials. However, at the end of the IDDS, these two also presented the highest progress. On the other hand, the highest score at the end of the program was reported for information gathering, teaching, and adaptability. Progress on skills can be seen in the table clusterized by demographic groups. When we analyze the result group by gender, we notice that while women report a slightly higher increase in skills overall, the most significant changes are on technical skills. We, when we compare across age, we can see that participants in youngest group reported a larger increment also in technical skills, with a 17% in and increase compared to 7% uh, to, from the older group. This is partly due to the fact that they had not been exposed to these skills before as opposed to their older counterparts. Finally, we grouped the results by origin of the participants and we concluded that international participants are driving most of the value regarding skills development. 
The overall progress for the different skills in the group is around 12%, higher than the 10 and the 6% for nationals and communities. And we talk about two reasons for these results. One, the result instrument. Although we use different mediums and language levels to ensure an understanding of questions, there might be a gap in understanding what these skills really mean for some participants, especially those with lower educational levels. Second, it is also reasonable to posit a potential psychological distinction on this. We argue that different levels of self-esteem and awareness in the different groups could explain that community members tend to assign less value in their skills progress than international groups. Next, we zoomed into the value of the program for community members. To complement our previous analysis on skills across groups, we looked at qualitative data provided in answer to this question. Using sentiment analysis over textual data, we observed that community members' overall perception regarding the experience was positive. Zooming in to look at what community members said when self-assessing their projects in answer to the question, quote, in general, how do you feel about your project, end quote, we also found, found overall positive sentiment scores. When comparing these scores between the mid and post points, we can see a slight increase in positive sentiment. Lastly, it is worth noting that in terms used at both mid and post points in the summit by community members show changes towards language that relates to design methodology, collective work, and projects. A key learning for us is the opportunity to untangle shared value as opposed to individual value. Since our survey did not include questions related to this, we used two main proxies to approximate the summit's collective value for communities. The first one is continued engagement in projects by outside participants after the summit. As communities make an investment when participating in summits, there is an expectation of this effort to extend over time. The rapid decline in involvement after the first year past the end of the summit, as shown in this graph on your left, makes clear what benefits can community members expect collectively in terms of post-work on projects. The second more straightforward proxy are the developed technologies themselves. Given that the value perceived by community members with regards to projects is overall positive, we assume prototypes did respond to the need of or opportunity collectively identified. Summits have seen the design of 40 functional prototypes, most of which, with very few exceptions, have been successfully installed as part of community partners' infrastructure. We conclude that using a multidimensional approach is helpful in highlighting the value of participation or the call across different types of participants and stakeholders across different types of skills. Now, it still leaves us with open questions such as how can we untangle the collective value of these programs? In future work, we will use qualitative analysis of this data, mostly from open-ended questions and interviews in trying to devise degrees of participation. And we will follow up releasing a data set that we use for this study along with updates from participants and projects. So that's it for us, and we look forward to seeing you at the conference. Bye-bye.